Flavia, you just finished your studies. Yes. Uh, congratulations <laughs> again. Um, now, Gastorp um, just had finished his studies as engineer. He's then mm-hmm. 23. But his real education only starts when he goes to Davos, Davos. for three weeks and then he stays there for seven years. So, uh, to Flavia and, and all of you, um, universities are supposed to be a place for building. Um, is that your experience? I'm very curious about that. Uh, uh, and if not, where have you found your own magic mountain? But Flavia, you first. Yeah, I must say I was very lucky to meet several great teachers already in high school, but then also at university. For example, my teacher in philosophy of law, he invited some students, who were mostly six of us, over to his home his own library and uh, he was scattering us around like some the deal was he's offering the wine we bring the food and then we discuss as long as it takes right so we mostly started at eight in the evening and then we i don't know discussed about free will or any other um you know philosophical issue and that was i mean i learned so much about uh, him and and his worldview but also he was of course um, challenging us a lot uh, about the broader world or outside of academics, definitely. So I, for me, that was an extraordinary uh, academic experience. So I would, I want to be thankful. But then, on the other hand, of course, what I missed in most of the seminars was like debate, you know, like and a, a political debate as well, because that what I was surprised about. I mean the most political activism I experienced at university was about, I don't know, the raise of tuition fees. Okay, I mean, it's an issue, of course. I'm not saying this, but, you know, that's not what is happening outside there in the world. So that's why also I co-founded this movement, because it was not like... Academia wasn't really a place where I felt there was a real discussion going on. It was very difficult. I'm talking about Italy. Uh, I studied ancient language at university. For me, it was di- very difficult to be a woman. Uh, I well remember that uh, one day, a professor, a very old professor, uh, told me, you are too blonde uh, to be taken seriously. And uh, I've always been a rebel. And the day before, what I... What did you answer? Hmm? What did you answer? I said, see you tomorrow. And, <laughs> okay, and the next day, I, I really came with dark hair. And I asked, me, uh, I asked him, uh, is it uh, right now? Uh, can I talk? Can I have uh, the same respect as my colleague? <laughs> and after my book, this is really funny, um, almost half a professor in Italy, it doesn't matter if an uh, engineer or classic language, claimed that they'd be my professor. <laughs> and this is, uh, of course, the same for me. No. Yeah. Yes, high five. <laughs> so, um, I won't go back. Magic Mountains. I did find, I just graduated from Penn um, a couple of months ago, and I, I felt blessed to have been there for four years. I was able to read, like, basically whatever I wanted for the entire time. It wasn't easy. It wasn't, like, consistent with the whole culture of the university to study history, intellectual history, for four years. There's a lot of pressure um, to, like, to, to consider it a pre-professional experience and to basically get out of it whatever you need to in, in order to make the most money you can. Um, I thought that it was anthro- anthropologically interesting, and that was part of my education. So reading books was part of my education and meeting people who were only in university in order to make a lot of money was part of my education. People who had never read, you know, an entire book in like were proud that they got through college without reading books. That was part of my education, meeting people like that. I really realized the importance of collaboration and of working with others and in both the world of music, you know, you become a better musician, a better artist when you open yourself up to collaborating with as many different kinds of musicians and artists as possible, but and also in um, when I was 15 and I learned about climate change, that was, that was where a huge turning point in my life where I realized that this was, no matter what else I was interested in, I had to follow this path and um, do whatever I could in this crisis. And in, in the world of climate action and, and activism, 
um, it's through that all of those collaborations that really have, I think, learned the most just from other people and people from all walks of life and what they're doing and what their ideas are. It is said, what was your Magic Mountain education? Um, I think um, it was really at home with my family. Um, I think especially the best thing you can give your child is the gift of reading and exploration because of... of literature because then they can just they have an autonomy and it goes back to what uh, they were saying earlier in the first panel about empathy that reading is magical because you can actually imagine what it's like to be somebody else and most of us experience the world through our own interpretive framework which is about our identity about who we happen to be our positionality uh, and reading enables you to come out of that and to be somebody else to be somewhere else um, so I really I think you know really the the best thing we can do is, is to read and to also not expect the formal education system to give us everything because I very much approach university as just an opportunity to do other things <laughs> like you than actually going to my classes. Um, <laughs> I mean, I went to enough to actually do well, but um, I very much you know, enjoyed reading around my subject and also actually engaging in activism. And I found that a lot of, you know, going back to your exactly. point. I just wanted to come. Yeah, yeah. It, it, a lot of the education happens outside exactly. the classroom. Yeah. It's about building Important. knowledge together. Yes. And I think that's what I learned in my family is that, okay, you have the text. Even when it comes to religion, you have revelation, which is something fixed in time. But actually when it comes to truth, it's something that's constructed continually yeah. and through interaction and exchange. Um, so university for me is a way of building uh, meaning with other people as well through student activism. I was active in my student union. I was active in the fair trade movement um, and in social work. Mm -hmm. So it's really about, I think, a university gives you a space and it's up to young people mm -hmm. to know how to use that space and to be active and not passive learners of, or recipients of knowledge.